Old Forester Statesman, originally released as a tie-in with the 2017 movie Kingsman The Gold Circle. Now it's, it's rare whiskey release that's affiliated with the movie remains a permanent release, but that's what we have here. 55 bucks though, let's talk about it on What's on the Shelf Wednesday. Welcome back to What's on the Shelf Wednesday on the Mash and Drum. I am Jason C. And in this series, I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. If you ever have a suggestion for me to do a video on What's on the Shelf Wednesday, please leave a comment below with your ideas. You just may get a shout out. So what's on the shelf today? My popular request from a lot of you out there, a bourbon I haven't had a lot of experience with, Old Forester Statesman. So way back in September 2017, the sequel to the movie Kingsman, The Secret Service, released called Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Now in May that year, Old Forester released its newest bourbon as well, called The Statesman, named after the American Secret Service sidekicks. That's a mouthful, Secret Service sidekicks, Secret Service sidekicks. <laughs> Secret Service sidekicks in the upcoming sequel. Now they had only released a small amount of bottles in May, leading up to the public release in August that same year. So the Statesman is a 95 proof addition to Old Forester's Whiskey Row series, which you wouldn't really know if you're looking at the bottle because the labels are so different. Uh, the Whiskey Row series, as you guys may or may not know, it's made up of a 90 proof original batch, the 93 proof Old Fine Whiskey, the 100 proof Bottle and Bond, and the 115 proof Popular Prohibition style. Now the movie mentions Louisville, Kentucky, as well as the distilling industry and Brown Foreman supposedly consulted uh, to make it historically accurate. Now in the movie, the Statesmen actually run a whiskey distillery as a front for their undercover operations as well. So Old Forester, you know, they released this bourbon in small allotments around the city uh, just after the press event at the time to build up excitement. And as I mentioned, this has remained a permanent release rather than just a novelty release. So this is bottled at 95 proof, uh, available for a price of about 55 bucks. Supposedly we're looking at a blend of barrels that are four to six years old. Now remember, you know, Forrester does use those heat cycled warehouses to give their bourbon, you know, make it seem a little bit more mature than it actually is. So let's try it on the nose here. Haven't, like I said, I haven't really tried this. Man, I don't know if I tried this at all. It's just been a really long time. So let's see what we get. Definitely get some young whiskey notes in here, but it's very sweet. There's a lot of banana in this, a lot of banana, which is very indicative of Old Forester mash. There's a little bit of like a musty, dusty oak funk to it that I'm getting on the nose, which is, I mean, I don't mind it, but it might be off-putting to some people. Yeah, definitely banana, a lot of vanilla here. Slight bit of some bright fruits coming out here. Maybe like a peach or an apricot. Get a slight hint of coconut here. And a note that I sometimes get with Old Forester, which is like acetone. So, you know, if you have a girlfriend or a mother or something that's, you know, does their nails all the time. My mother did, did her nails all the time growing up. So like that acetone note, that, that smell of nail pause remover, I could smell like a mile away. And I, I get it sometimes in Old Forester. But yeah, I think the most dominant note here you're looking at is, you know, a, a very distinct banana note. Some of that musty, musty, funky kind of barrel note there. Some fruit flavors are coming out and a little bit of that acetone. So let's see what we get on the palate. Cheers, guys. More banana. Ooh, man, for 95 proof for this, you got a lot of the rye spice that kicks in. It drinks a little bit. A little bit harsh, which makes me think it's a little definitely on the younger side. A little bit of cinnamon on the back end of that. Yeah, mostly banana. Probably gonna need another sip of this. Here we go. Mmm, cherry, 
on the palate. I think that's the more of the fruit that's coming forward. Again, a little bit of that coconut. It's got a lot of like barrel tannins that are kind of, you know, coming in and just really like these prickly like barrel tannins. It almost feels like it's very sharp. You know, as you're sipping on it, it's very, you know, it kind of stings the pal a little bit, which again, it could, you know, let us know that there's a little bit of a younger bourbon in here. Let's go for another sip. It's got this nice like banana, cherry, coconut mixture thing going on, which isn't bad. Um, very corn forward, mostly banana. You got your light caramels, vanillas. I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's, it's not like something I would deem like delicious, but man, for the price points, this is 55 bucks. You have the Bottle and Bond, which is a, uh, I think a very underrated release from Old Forester, the 1897 Bottle and Bond, the Whiskey Row series. That's a hundred proof. And you can get that for 50. Or if you spend five bucks more, you can go up and get the Old Forester 1920 uh, Prohibition, which is kind of the darling of the Whiskey Row series. So actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's compare it to the Bottle and Bond. I'm just curious, five proof points higher, $5 cheaper. Let's see how it compares. All right, so I just poured some Old Forester 1897 Bottle and Bond, also from the Whiskey Row series. Let's see what they compare like on the nose here. Now again, if you Bottle and Bond, you gotta be at least four years old. Uh, supposedly this is a blend of four to six. Now at least four years, we don't really know how old this stuff could be. So let's see how it compares. See, I think the Bottle and Bond actually comes off a little bit older on the nose. Old Forester Statesman really just punches through again. Cherry, maybe some peach, some coconut, and a lot of banana. The Old Forester Bottle and Bond, I'm just getting a little bit more rounded oak, a little bit richer caramel here on the nose. I like the nose a lot better on the bottle and bond. All right, let's go for a sip of this one. Yeah, I like the bottle and bond better. It just drinks a lot more rounded. It's not as sharp, but still provides a nice finish, giving you a lot of different flavors here. The Statesman. Yeah, for a 95 proofer, it actually drinks sharper and hotter than the bottle and bond does, even though it's uh, five proof points higher. You know, we're looking at 100 proof here. I just think the bottle and bond just has more complexity to it. Yeah, just it's just a better balanced bourbon. I think overall, I think the issue for me with the Statesman is the price point. I think at 55, you're right there in between the great bottle and bond 100 proofer, which actually drinks a little bit nicer. And you know, for five bucks more, you're looking at the old, uh, the old Forester 1920 Prohibition, which is just a beast of a bourbon that you know most most people love it. Uh, it drinks a little uh, a little harsh for some people, but the flavor in that is just incredible. I think for the money, go with the Bottle and Bond. It drinks a little bit more rounded in flavor, but if you like harsher flavor profiles, if you like a lot of banana, some coconut, some cherry, something with a little bit more bite to it. You like kind of that musty like oak, that youthful note. Some people do like younger bourbons. Um, then the Statesman would probably be, you know, for you. But I think at $55, this one is kind of a miss for me. I'd much rather drink the Old Forester Ball and Bond or the, uh, or the Prohibition, the 1920. So there you go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video for What's on the Shelf Wednesday as we took a look at the Old Forester Statesman. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. I do a lot of posts on there. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this one or if you have any other ideas for uh, upcoming What's on the Shelf Wednesday episodes. Uh, I feel like because it's the Statesman, I have to do it in my terrible English accent. So as I always say, it's not about the whisk gates, the people you share it with. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, everyone. I'll see you next time. Right. I just went like Australian. I don't know what happened. Take care, everybody.